presentation. Um, so the Amazon Wholesale Adventure formula is what I'm going to teach you today. And basically what this is, it's just my name um, for what I do for my wholesale business uh, every day. It's the formula and the system that I'm using to find a profitable wholesale suppliers and profitable products to sell on Amazon. So I'm going to walk you through that. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about my story as well, just so you have an idea of my background also, and then we'll dive into the reverse sourcing. So a little bit about myself. I started in this, the computer world and kind of in e-commerce uh, on accident back in 1994. Well, not really by accident, but without really even knowing it. So I started a website. If any of you remember GeoCities, um, if you're old enough to remember GeoCities back in the heyday, beginning of the internet times, um, I started a website called Best Teen. And on there was like games, and chat rooms and newsletters, uh, comedy newsletters and things like that for teenagers. I was 14, 15 years old at the time. And I ended up getting that website to $300 a month, basically off of getting people to sign up for um, email newsletters and play these different games and stuff like that. And back then they were paying outrageous amounts, like a dollar, $2 to get people to sign up for these things. So. Um, I started getting a little bit of money, which was really cool. Um, you know, I'm 14 years old and I'm getting 300 bucks a month, uh, basically just running this fun website that I'm having fun doing. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't find any old pictures of it, uh, but that would have been really cool if I could. Um, but after that, I kind of went the way that they teach you in school. So <clears throat> everybody's probably gone through the schooling system. Uh, most people probably through the public schooling system. Some of you may be private. Um, some of you may be taught at home. But as a whole, what they teach you in school is uh, to study hard, don't fail, and teach you how to get a job, be a, an employee. And so that's the route I went. Unfortunately, in school uh, nowadays, especially at least in the United States, which is what I'm familiar with, um, they don't teach you how to be an entrepreneur. They teach you how to work for someone else. They don't teach you how to make money for yourself. Um, and that's the way that I went. Um, went through college. I uh, got two, uh, three degrees, actually, two associate's degrees, one in computer programming, one in computer networking, and also a bachelor's degree in software or information uh, technologies and software design. So I have a background in uh, computers, which definitely helps uh, with a lot of things, but it's not something that you need to be successful at uh, this Amazon adventure uh, by any means. So don't let that deter you in any way if you're not a computer person. Um, after college, I found uh, jobs in the computer field, uh, repairing computers um, and things like that. Um, but then I kind of switched back into my entrepreneurial uh, mind frame again and started TC Tech's computers, which was retail stores. Um, we had uh, three retail stores at one time, um, ran that from July 2006 to July or till May 2016, had uh, anywhere between eight to 16 employees and repaired thousands of computers, had tens of thousands of customers, and it was a lot of fun. Um, but it was physical retail. Um, and in 2014, I found out about this Amazon game. And that was with the help of Pat Flynn and Scott Volker. Um, a lot of you probably know Pat Flynn and Scott Volker. If you don't, I highly recommend checking them out. They, they're really awesome guys, have a lot of information. Pat Flynn is more about the passive income. His business is Smart Passive Income. And he led me into Scott Volker, who at the time was really focused on selling on Amazon private label. So I got into that game. Um, and that went into the Amazon retail arbitrage, which I did that for a while. And now it's rolled over a lot, pretty much everything into Amazon wholesale 
although I'm also doing a private label brand that's been successful as well. But unfortunately, right now I'm all sold out and trying to get those back in stock. So, uh, but Amazon Wholesale is where I found a lot of success. And in January 2018 is when I went full time on my Amazon business. And it's been full steam ahead since then. Um, now, if you haven't been a full time entrepreneur uh, before, there's a lot of roller coasters, a lot of ups and downs. Uh, one day you're feeling like you're the king of the world and nothing can touch you. And then the next day you're like, oh my God, what's going on? I don't know anything and everything's falling apart. And I've had plenty of those as well. So if you feel that or when you feel that as an entrepreneur, because it's going to happen, it's just normal for all of us, just understand that everybody goes through that it's not just you you just have to keep pushing through and and know what you don't know and understand that it's always going to be a learning experience going forward you're never going to know everything um, and here's just a screenshot of an instagram post that i recently made when i hit a 90,000 for the first time here um, that was back on uh, february 9th so what nine days ago it looks like uh, so that was pretty awesome. I was pretty excited for that. And now I'm pushing up towards trying to get to 100,000 uh, per month in sales as well. Um, so this is a, yes, that is me on the right there. I grew up a big Lions fan uh, to my father's chagrin. He's a, I, I live in Wisconsin and so he's a big Packer fan. Um, this is my brother, Troy. You can see he's wearing a Miami Dolphins hat. Um, so we both kind of rebelled in football uh, quite a bit growing up. And so this is my mom, my mom, Jane, uh, my brother, Troy, my dad, Dan. And this, of course, is me. I'm thinking that's probably when I was back around 14, 15 years old when I was getting started uh, in this entrepreneur game. Um, but finding your why is a big thing that I want to touch on before we jump into the tactics, because all the tactics in the world are not going to help you succeed if you don't have a reason why to succeed. And it needs to be a big why, not just I want to get money or something like that, or I want to pay off my bills and things like that. If you truly want to succeed, you have to have something that's going to drive you and something deep and uh, probably emotional in some way that's going to drive you. Um, so just a little bit about my why. Um, I grew up in low to middle class, um, definitely had everything we need growing up. You know, I didn't know that we were low middle class. I just knew that I had a good family and things were good. We went camping all the time and had lots of fun, uh, but my mother and father worked extremely hard. So my mom was a beautician going to work and cutting hair all day long. My father is a carpenter, so he works on houses, climbing up ladders and stuff all day long, worked very hard um, all their lives to uh, give us uh, a good life and a good uh, childhood growing up. Um, and unfortunately, they still have to work hard today. Um, there, my mom is in her 60s. My dad is in her his 60s, and they're both getting close to retirement, but still having to work very hard today because they've always just had the employee mentality of working, trading your time for money. And if you want to be wealthy, you need to switch that and figure out how you can trade money to buy more time. Um, and that's one thing that's really nice about Amazon is it really can help to do that. Um, they have very little in retirement money and are going to be relying on Social Security. And if, if any of you have parents that are in their 60s, uh, 70s or 50s, they're probably very likely in the same boat. And because uh, a lot of them are a lot of uh, baby boomers are not going to have the money they need to retire. And so that is really my first big why, which is basically to give back to my parents. They gave to me, gave me a good childhood. I wanna be making enough money that I can give them a good retirement. Um, so that is one of my first big emotional whys uh, to help my parents 
um, have the retirement that they want. So they don't have to work until the day that they die. Uh, so that's my first big why. Um, my second why is has to do with my new family that I have. Um, so I married the love of my life as Miley um, in September of 2007. And those are our two little Yorkshire Terriers, Mia and Gwen. And so we're building our life together, just getting started. And we want to be able to travel the world. We want to own a dream home, have kids. And which leads me to my second big why is the why I'm building uh, this Amazon business and my business in general. And that's to build the life that we want and to have unlimited time for ourselves and unlimited time with our kids. Uh, I don't know if it if you've experienced the same thing, how frustrating it can be to get time off from a job, have to go in when you don't want to go in and things like that. And with your own business, you can kind of pick and choose uh, when you want to work, when you don't want to work. If you don't want to get up in the morning and you want to work late, you can choose that. When you want to go on vacation, you don't have to uh, call the boss and tell them you're going to go. So once you build a successful business and you set it up properly with the proper systems and uh, employees down the line and things like that, you have a lot of freedom and uh, you're able to live life on your own terms instead of someone else's terms. So that's my other big why that drives me. Um, so I'd really encourage you and ask you, what is your big why? Before I teach you the tactics and you go through and start building your Amazon uh, business, since a lot of you are just getting started out, figure out what your big why is. And don't stop with the first thought that you have. Write it down, and then underneath that, drill down into that. Why, ask yourself, why is that my why? And that's gonna keep leading you in and further down and down and down to get to the root and the core of your why. Um, so just uh, definitely take some time to do that. It's gonna, be, it's gonna help you be more successful uh, in the long run. And that way you're not just doing this to make money. You're doing it for a big why, your big reason, uh, your big reason why. Um, so definitely would encourage you to do that if you want to have long-term lasting success in your business. And so now on to the tactics. So that is my story, my whys on why I'm building my Amazon business and why no matter what, I'm going to be successful. Uh, nothing is going to stop me one way or another. I will be successful because of my big whys. Um, but the tactics uh, using the Amazon Wholesale Venture Formula, what I'm going to teach you here, um, has allowed me to grow from 30,000 a month up to 90,000 a month and growing. Uh, when I went full time in this, I was selling 30,000. A lot of that was retail arbitrage, a little bit of private label and a little bit of wholesale. I've switched, as I said, to mostly wholesale now using this formula and have grown to 90,000 plus and continue to grow more and more every day. I've uh, I've set my 10x goal, as I call it. Um, if ever, any of you have read the 10x uh, book by Grant Cardone, uh, I just got back from his uh, 10x conference in Miami, Florida. It was awesome. Would highly recommend it if you ever get the chance to go. Um, but I've 10 x um, So my goal for last year was a million. Um, it doesn't look like I'm going to hit it. I'm probably going to have about six to seven hundred thousand when it's all said and done. Uh, but this year for 2019, I'm 10xing that and I'm going for 10 million. Um, it's going to be a stretch, but what it's going to do is it's going to make me think bigger. Um, I'm not going to be thinking smaller. I'm going to have to think bigger and try to move my systems and the way I'm doing things bigger than what I'm already doing. Um, my 90 day goal that I have currently is uh, trying to get to $40,000 in profit per month. So that kind of goes along with that 10 million. Again, it's a really big goal. Uh, whether I make it or not is kind of irrelevant, but the main thing is that I have that goal and that's what I'm working towards every single day to try to get there. 
Um, and the big thing with this formula is I'm finding new suppliers and profitable products every single week and sometimes every single day. Um, it's always coming. The more suppliers I contact using this method, uh, the more profitable products that I'm finding. Um, and I'm not going to sit here and try to sugarcoat and say this is going to be easy. It's going to be hard. It's going to be a work. It's going to be a grind. It's going to be a hustle. It's not easy at all. Um, there's a lot of suppliers that are no good, a lot of them that have, don't have profitable products, and you're going to lose products too. One product might be selling good, other people come in, they tank the price, and now you have to start over and find more products. So it's work, but it's definitely worth it. It's building for me, and I know it can work for you as well. Um, so why would I tell you this? I get this question a lot. Uh, why would I give away my secrets for doing this? Um, and one of the reasons is I'm, I'm selfish. It feels good to help someone else succeed. Um, when I do one-on-one -on -one coaching or I get people who are posting in the comments on my YouTube channel and they're succeeding, it feels good. Uh, so that's one of the reasons that I do it uh, because I learned from other people Scott Volker and Pat Flynn. And so I feel like I should give away uh, the information that I have as well and help other people succeed as well. Um, I want you to help your parents as well. I want you to have more time, have more time to travel, et cetera. Again, uh, one of those selfish motivations makes me feel good when I see other people succeed. Um, and yes, I will try to sell you something. I have one-on-one -on -one coaching and things like that, which I will show you guys at the end. I'm going to give away everything here so you guys can all do this for free on your own, but some people like additional help, so I do offer that. So um, not a complete charity here. Um, I do have things that I sell as well. Um, and the big thing is I know there's enough room for all of us in this Amazon game. So e-commerce is only 10% of all retail currently, and it's going to be growing. I mean, do you think that's going to grow or it's going to shrink? Uh, obviously, it's going to keep growing. It's only at 10%. It's going to get bigger, a lot bigger, uh, probably very quickly. Um, currently, as of 2018, Amazon was at 41% of e-commerce sales. Um, I got this from uh, Fortune.com. Estimates are from Need, Ham & Co. And they're estimating that Amazon's going to grow from 14, 41% of all e-commerce sales to over 50% by 2021. Um, so people say that Amazon's getting saturated, um, but they just keep growing and getting bigger. More products are being offered. More products are being created every single day. And a lot of the brands, they don't want to sell on Amazon. That's not what they do. They sell their product to people who want to sell it in retail. Uh, so there's a lot of room for all of us out there. Um, and most people are not going to act. So um, out of all the people who are on this webinar, maybe five or 10% of you are actually going to act on this information. Um, unfortunately, a lot of people, they get the information um, and maybe they just keep getting the information and they're afraid to get started uh, or they just move on to something else, that shiny object. Um, it's really difficult. Uh, you know, I was, uh, I grew up, I had, you know, ADD and things like that. And I think all entrepreneurs do, or a lot of us do. And so it's really easy to get tempted by, oh, shiny object, drop shipping. Maybe I should go do that. Or, oh, uh, selling on eBay. Maybe I should go do that. Or uh, selling on uh, Shopify. Maybe I should go do that or whatever the latest thing is. Um, it's really easy to get distracted. And so you got to focus in on one thing until you succeed at it, until you reach your goals. And once you have that on autopilot, then start looking at some of those other shiny objects. So it happens to me, it happens to a lot of us. Uh, so don't don't feel too bad if it happens to you a lot as well. But really try to, to focus if you're going to succeed on something. So here is the actual formula. So this is the formula that I use to determine which products I'm going to sell. Um, and it's a mathematical formula. It's really easy, so don't worry too much if you're not a math person. But 
Um, basically, uh, what I look for is if ROI, which is your return on investment, um, that is, so if I buy a product for five, uh, well, let's say 10 to make it easy. So if I buy a product for $10, I need to make at least 30%, which would be $3 profit on it to make it worth my while. Um, and that's where I have the three. So at least 30% return on investment and at least $3 minimum profit, preferably higher than that, preferably 40, 50, 60, 100 if you can get it. Um, but this is the minimum that I look for. And if the number of monthly sales times the profit is greater than or equal to X dollars in profit per month. So basically what you would do in the first example, if it's $3 profit, if your monthly sales, let's say you figure you can get 100 sales at $3 profit, that would be $300 in profit per month. So you need to determine what that minimum is for you. Uh, when you're first starting out, it might be $100, $200, $300 minimum profit per month. I'm at about $500 plus. Um, you have to figure out uh, what, it, what it's worth to you, the time that it's going to take to open that account, find those products, make the orders, um, prep them if you have to, put the labels on, ship them in the Amazon and all of that. Um, so you have to figure all that in and see if it's gonna be worthwhile for you to do that. And then if the price is stable, so it's not fluctuating all over the place, you're not gonna, you, you wanna make sure it's not at a high point right now, and then in a week, it's gonna drop way down. And I'm gonna show you how you can see that. Um, you wanna make sure Amazon does not sell it. We do not wanna be competing with Amazon at all. Um, and then you wanna make sure the rank is stable and the sales rank that is, uh, so that it's, it's gonna continue selling at the level or get better than what it currently is. Uh, make sure it's just not a temporary spike or that you could improve it. So a little more of an advanced tactic is uh, fixing listings, making them better to improve the ranking um, and get more sales out of that uh, product. Then basically, if it meets that formula, I buy, 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 and I sell, sell, sell. Um, a big thing to keep in mind when you're, when you're in the wholesale, your profit is made on the buy. Uh, so you really want to make sure you're negotiating the best prices and getting the products at the cheapest price before you buy them. Because when you buy is when you're going to make that profit, even more so than when you sell it. And you still have to sell it, but you have to make sure you're buying it at a number that makes sense that you can be profitable. So how are we going to find products? Let me take a drink here. All right, so how to find products. What I'm going to teach you on this webinar is the reverse sourcing tactic. And that is really what I'm using to find all of my products currently. And basically what this is going to allow us to do is find high volume selling items on Amazon, make sure the price is high enough to have profit, Make sure there's at least four other sellers on the product. Make sure Amazon does not and has not sold the product in the past. Find the supplier's website using Google or whatever search engine you like. I actually use one called DuckDuckGo, which is a privacy search engine. And contact the suppliers to open up accounts. Use uh, the other sellers of the products to find even more suppliers and products that you can sell and that is pretty much it there's more in there like negotiating prices and stuff like that um, but the big thing is uh, those steps there so if you guys are ready to see this in action what i want you to do is in the questions go ahead and put in some categories uh, that you want to see some categories that you want me to find a product in on Amazon. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to amazon.com here. 
and just show you some of the categories. So if you click on this little sandwich menu over here when you're on Amazon, it shows you a list of all the categories. So go ahead and let's pick one of these categories. I'm going to figure out how to open up the questions again here. New questions. There we go. All right. So let's see who got the first one in here. So the first person was Jordan, and he wanted something in the home category. Um, so let's see. Let's go to home. And all right, Jordan, go ahead and post which one do you want here? Which category would you like us to go into? Let's see. Go ahead, enter it in the qu questions, Jordan, if you can hear me. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and pick one here if I don't see it pop in here in just a few seconds. Uh, what category do you want here, Jordan, on the left? You said home. These are the categories underneath home. And he wants to go into appliances. So let's go to appliances, and then I'll just drill down from there. So, all right. So this is the first, that's the first step you're going to have to do, and probably the hardest is to find which category you want to go into to start with. Um, you can either have your store be a focused store in a niche, and you're going to want to focus on that niche, or you can do like I'm doing, which is more of a general store, uh, where I'm selling pretty much anything and everything that I can find to sell. Um, I think the general store is probably easier to find products. Um, the niche store is maybe a little easier to open up some of the more specialty accounts if you can show that you're a niche uh, website, um, especially if you have some of your own websites or maybe a retail store at some point as well. Um, but what I'm gonna do is just keep drilling down in here because I wanna find a level of products where they're selling about uh, in the hundreds to the thousands uh, per month, especially if you're just starting off. So I'm just going to scroll down here and see if we have products on this page, uh, which we have some, but these are all best uh, and best sellers and things like that. So I'm going to drill down a little bit further. Um, I'm going to just go into the parts and accessories category here. And let's see what we got. You can see we got tons of categories. So you can keep drilling down if you want to. Um, but now if I scroll down here, we do actually have some products down here at the bottom below all these special categories or sections that Amazon puts here, the promotion parts. We've got some categories down here. And I'm going to use a tool called Jungle Scout, um, which is a tool that's going to allow me to see how much these products are selling per month. Um, so you can see it's pulling in all of these products, and a lot of these are selling 8,000 per month, thousands and thousands and tens of thousands per month. I don't see any in the hundreds here. Um, uh, well, here's one, but a lot of these are really high. And if you're an established seller, competing with some of these brands might make sense, or competing for some of these brands. But if you're just getting started, I would probably drill down further and find a category that has a little lower selling products or um, less per month. So let's go ahead and just pick another one over here. And hopefully I'll get the good one here. Let's go with dishwasher parts and accessories. Sounds good. And let's just hit the Jungle Scout again and see what we are selling on this page. So again, here, the monthly sales it's showing is what I'm looking at first. And so this is looking better. So now you have some in the thousands, 
uh, and quite a few in the hundreds here as well. So this is probably a good level to start at. Um, so the next step that I would do from here is extract a few pages and that's with this button down here. And so usually I just hit that like four or five times and it takes a little bit of time because what it's doing is it's grabbing the next page. Um, so basically it's doing the same thing as if we went to the bottom of the page and clicked the next page. It's doing that, it's scraping that page, bringing in all the listings then going to the next page, scraping it, pulling in all the listings for us. Um, so we can just get a bunch of listings to start with. Um, and then we can keep drilling down from there. So let's give this just a minute while that's loading. Uh, once it gets done, this little icon should stop spinning here. And the fan in my computer is kicking into high gear as it's processing all of that information that it's pulling in for us. And while that's happening, I'm going to delete some of these questions here. Um, well, not the questions, but the categories ones. Whoops, just got logged out here. Uh, let me start that over one moment. I'm going to bet my buyer's assistant that uh, I have working for me probably just jumped on and started finding more uh, brands for me. So let me log back in and let her know that I am using Jungle Scout at the moment. Sorry about that. Bear with me just a moment here. And uh, log back in. Technical difficulties. Wouldn't be a live webinar without it here. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm logged back into Jungle Scout. So we're going to have to start that process back over again here. All right, so she was using it. Let's refresh this. And there we go. Next page a couple times and let that load up. Uh, while we're waiting for that, I'll just see if I can answer a few questions. Um, one of the questions uh, from Jeremy, is this from the TWF program? Uh, which is the wholesale formula program. And no, it is not. Uh, have no affiliation with them. Um, have not taken their program, so I don't know how good it is or how good it isn't. Uh, let's see. Can I keep my full-time job and do entrepreneur as a side hustle from Eric. Yes, Eric, definitely you can. I would highly recommend it, especially starting off, um, especially if you need your income uh, to live. You can definitely do this as a side hustle without a problem and then uh, go full time whenever you're ready to do that. All right, almost done loading here. All right, so now it's done. Let's go ahead and the next step that I'm going to do is just narrow this down. So you can see this category over here. It says seller. 
Um, FBA is fulfilled by Amazon. That means someone like you or I is selling this product and Amazon is shipping it out. So it's stored in Amazon's warehouses. That's what uh, pretty much all of us are probably going to do and what I would recommend. AMZ means Amazon is the one selling that currently. And so those we definitely want to avoid. And then FBM, fulfilled by merchant, that means uh, someone is uh, shipping it out of their own warehouse or out of their house, um, and it's not uh, uh, have it doesn't have the quick two day shipping that uh, Amazon Prime or does or has available. Um, so FBM and FBA are what we want to compete against. So what I do here is go ahead and click this hamburger menu in Jungle Scout. <clears throat> And I uncheck Amazon, because that's going to get rid of all the Amazon for us. And then what I also do is I put the lowest sellers at four. Um, and then for highest, I just put like four nines. And I do four here because if there's four or more sellers already selling a product, it's probably a good chance that uh, it's from a brand that's opening up accounts and allowing other people to sell it. Uh, the brand is not selling it or that they don't have an exclusive seller. Um, if there's only like one, two or three people selling it, it's probably a good chance that they're not going to allow you to open an account unless you get lucky that maybe it's a new product or something like that. Um, but for starting out, I would do four uh, sellers or more. And then I'm going to hit filter results. And there was a hundred and some results here. And you can see now it's narrowed down to 21 results. Uh, we've got all the monthly sales. We got the FB sellers and then the number of sellers on those uh, products. So now what I would do from here is go ahead and just start opening up and going through all of these products. Uh, to see how good they are and, and just make sure that the brand isn't selling them and that Amazon hasn't been selling them in the past. Um, so let's go ahead. I'm going to start with one of the little higher priced ones. Um, products that are over $20 are usually a little easier to find a profit in them. The lower price they get, the slimmer the margins are usually going to be or the smaller the profit is going to be. So Let's go ahead and just click on this guy here. Well, I'm not going to go with that one because that's Whirlpool. That's a really big brand. Um, let's see if we can find some that aren't quite so big of brands. Uh, let's check this one. How about Ice Tech Co? So let's go ahead and open that one up. And so I clicked on it. And the first thing that I like to check is just to make sure that the brand, which is this right here, Ice Tech Co., is not the name of the person who's selling it. Um, you can see in this circumstance, it's Prime Co. Supply. So it's a different brand, so a different name. So most likely that means it's not the brand. Typically, if the brand is selling their own product, they have the same name. So it'd be Ice Tech Co., it'd be Ice Tech Co. over here. And if the brand is selling the product, they probably aren't going to open up an account with you. Um, you'll find exceptions to that, definitely. But as a general rule of thumb, if the brand is selling it, they're not going to want other people selling it as well. Uh, but in this case, it's Prime Co. Supply. And another brand that's a company that's selling is Factory Parts Outlet. Um, so that is definitely a good sign. That's the first thing that I want to check. And then... I'm going to scroll down here and I have a plugin called uh, Keepa plugin. Um, if you've never used Keepa before, Keepa.com, they basically maintain history of Amazon uh, rankings. So this green line is the sales rank. And then uh, this blue line is the price for new. And these blue, these triangles are the price for the third party FBA, which is what we would be if we're selling it. So what I look for is I just expand this out. I can click the all here and just make sure that none of this is orange. If there's orange sections, like the background would be orange, those are times when Amazon was selling the product. And we want to avoid those uh, if Amazon is frequently selling the product because we don't want to 
get a bunch of product in and then Amazon comes on the listing and they're not going to share the sales with you. Um, normal sellers outside of Amazon, if you guys are similar prices, it's going to what do with rotating the buy box, which is giving everybody sales if all things are equal and their prices are similar. Um, in this case, you can see no orange. Um, the sales rank currently is right around this 30,000. You can see where the green line ends here. And that is right about in the middle. Um, so it's fluctuating up and down, but the middle is about that 30,000. Um, and there's, it's not currently at a big peak or anything like that. So what we can do is we can click Jungle Scout again. And Jungle Scout is going to say this one's selling 100 per month. Uh, which is a little low. It's on the low side. Um, I personally try to go for 300 or more, um, but we'll go down with this one just so you can see the process um, because 100 is not bad, especially since uh, there's only five sellers, um, depending on what your profit and if it meets the formula uh, equation that I showed you previously. Um, so what I would do after that, after seeing the Keepa graph, and you can see the price sta is staying pretty steady here. This blue line is pretty steady uh, over the last three months, 274 days. Um, so we know that we know the price is probably not going to jump all over the place. It's going to stay where it's at, so we can trust the profit calculations that we get. So next, I would click on these new suppliers over here. And so this is going to show me all of the suppliers or people currently selling this product. And so you can see there's three people selling and two of them are selling prime. So those are probably the two that I would focus on. And what I would do from here is number one, I would probably look into purchasing this product from this brand. Um, so what I would do from here is I would copy this brand, the brand name here. I would open up a new window and do a search for that brand. And lots of the times, the very first or one of the first results is going to be that brand. And in this case, it definitely looks like it is Ice Tech, um, their website, icetech.com. If it's not, you're going to have to dig a little deeper. Um, the harder you have to work to find the brand's website, probably the better because it's going to deter other people. Uh, but in this case, we found it right here. But don't be afraid to dig through a few pages, try to find their Facebook page, try to find their LinkedIn page, things like that if you have to, uh, to find the information. Um, because if you go through that process and do more work, you're going to be more likely one of the fewer sellers selling that product. Um, but in this case, Ice Technology looks like it's the first one. But what I like to do is go to their website and maybe find some of their products and make sure that it does look like it's some of the correct ones. Now, I'm seeing some micro tell, some boards and stuff. So this is most likely the correct place. Um, this is the W. 2700. Uh, let's see if they have a search. You can even search for it here. Well, their search doesn't work. So this is a really small brand. I actually like this one a lot. Um, so if anybody wants to look into this one and selling this one, when you see a, a website like this, you know it's a small brand um, and odds are good that they're going to sell to you. So this is a really good one. Um, Let's not bombard them with people calling them and trying to get their products, but uh, it's probably a good one to sell. So now that I know that the products they're selling look the same, this is probably the right place. The next thing I'm going to look for is like a wholesale setup. Um, so sometimes there'll be a link to set up a wholesale account. Other times there won't be. Uh, we've got some emails down here, so that's cool. Uh, we can click on the contact us and sometimes there you'll find like a contact to open up a wholesale account or something like that. Uh, here I'm not seeing it. Uh, so what I would do is probably contact the product sales, uh, which is this email address here and write them an email just saying, hey, um, I came across your product. I would probably mention the product number. 
Um, I'm interested in selling it. Can you please let me know how to open up a wholesale account? Um, and I'm gonna give you links at the end here to download the email templates that I use. Uh, so don't worry about writing that down. You'll be able to download those templates that I use. Um, they're pretty generic emails, pretty basic. Uh, we're just trying to start the communication with them. Um, and then depending on what they come back with, they might say, um, you know, where are you gonna sell it? And then you can let them know that I'm looking to sell it on Amazon. Definitely be upfront, don't lie about it. Um, and they might come back and say, we don't want any more Amazon sellers. And if that's the case, uh, depending on how you wanna go, you can follow up and say, well, you know, I'm looking at your listing here and uh, this product that I'd like to sell, it only has one picture. Um, Amazon allows up to eight and more pictures really allow more conversions. I could take pictures for you, get more pictures on here, um, help increase sales for you. Um, the title is really generic. There's not really any information about what the product is for and things that might help a person buy it and wanna buy it or search it and find it on Amazon. Um, I could really improve your bullets and things like that, make them more powerful, um, more uh, get better conversions and things like that. If you wanna go down that route on improving listings, and I do a lot of that um, and it does help me uh, open up accounts um, with suppliers. Like a lot of times they'll say, well, how about I just sell this one product? I can show you what I can do. We'll get more sales on that. And then maybe after that, you can open up the rest of your product line for me. Um, and that has worked for me. A lot of times they'll come back and just say, no, we don't want any more sellers. But sometimes they'll say, okay, yeah, let's go ahead and give that a try. Um, otherwise they might come back and say, well, here's our wholesale pricing, these are the products, things like that. And once you get that product sheet from them, the next step is to run that through uh, a program. Uh, well, I like to use a program. You could do it manually one by one and punch it in uh, to Amazon and calculate your, um, your profit. But I like to use a tool called AMZ Analyzer. Um, and that's this program right here um, to run a spreadsheet through and find the products that could be profitable. Um, now I'm gonna just show you this and open up a result uh, that I've had previously. And this is just a result from another seller uh, that I just grabbed by random. So they're not actual numbers, uh, but just so I can show you. Um, what you would do with this is you would run the spreadsheet through this software. And I have a YouTube video walking through you through all this software just so that we don't have to spend all the time on this. Um, but I'm just gonna show you uh, that you can run it through here and find profitable products. So you'd select the spreadsheet, run it through, and then I'll go ahead and open this one up. You would get a results page, uh, something like this. Um, so here it's gonna show you uh, the products that that brand would sell, links to their product on Amazon. And you can actually select all the products and click show reviews in Amazon data. So that's gonna show if Amazon is selling it. So we can avoid those ones, focus on the ones that Amazon is not selling. And you can see here, it's calculating my return on investment on this product would be 61%. My profit is $30. So that's really awesome. My purchase price is $49.50 and it's selling for a hundred. So that one right there would be a perfect product that we could uh, work on and sell. Now with that said, you can see there's some products up here. Let's just say Amazon's not selling this one. My return on investment is only 12% and I would only make $2. So right off the bat, that's no good. But you always want to negotiate um, your discount with the wholesale, with the supplier. So you're always going to want to ask, just say, hey, I'm looking at this product here. It looks like I could sell um, maybe 100 of those a month. Uh, would you be able to get the price down to instead of $14.52, could you get that price down closer to $10? 
And they're going to come back and say yes or no, and you can go back and negotiate back and forth on there. So the main thing is do not be afraid to negotiate with the suppliers. Um, it's normal in the wholesale industry for people to ask for discounts. They're either going to say yes or no. And if you don't ask, the default answer is no. So always ask for a discount. What I like to do is I find the products, I find how many I, I want to make an opening order with, and then I send them to them with the price that I'd like to get to. Um, and then go back and forth and figure out a price that works uh, for both of us and is in my profit margin. If it works, I order it. If it doesn't work, I don't order it. Um, so that is the big thing there. Um, let me see um, if there's anything that I'm missing. Let's go ahead and just look at one of these other listings here just so I can show you um, another keep a graph. Maybe this one will have Amazon having sold it in the past. And actually, yes, they are selling it right here. So that means once the Keeper graph is loading here, now you can see all the orange. So if you see that, just consider that orange as like a stop. Don't go any further, find a different product. Um, so now you've found one product that you can sell. And that is really the hard part because the next step that we can do is if this one allowed us to open up an account, now we have these other sellers and guess what? They've already done the work for you finding other products. So let's go ahead and just take a peek at their stores. And you can see these people have total rankings of a couple thousand, uh, 4,000 here. Uh, that's a good level to start at. If they had like hundreds of thousands of reviews or 50,000 or something like that, you're probably going to want to find smaller people to copy um, because once they get bigger, you buy bigger volumes, you can open up bigger accounts. But with these smaller people, the products that they're selling, they're probably similar to you or just a little bit out in front of you. You want to find people that are out in front of you that you can chase and find products that they're selling. So if you click on that person on their seller name, you can then click on their storefront here, and now you're gonna see all of the products that they've already worked hard and found accounts and opened up. And guess what? Now you can contact this brand here, or you can contact whatever brand, this one here, or LG, or whatever the case may be, Seal Pro. Um, you can find all the brands that they're selling and sell them as well. Um, and a really cool thing with, with AMZ Analyzer, we're almost out of time here and I want to take some questions. Um, you can copy the merchant ID, which is this number that comes after merchant equals. And it makes it really easy for you because on the dashboard, we can click this competing seller and paste that in here click OK and run. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull in all of the products from that seller that they're currently selling, match all the information on Amazon, tell us if Amazon is selling them, tell us how many reviews, estimated number of sales, and things like that. So then we can contact just the brands that have products that make sense for us to sell. So if we click over here on the results, and I select them, click the show reviews, and those are going to start populating in here. Um, when it's pulling from a seller, you're going to want to ignore your ROI and profit because those aren't accurate. I'm not even sure where it's pulling this purchase price from, but we don't know that information yet. So just ignore all that. But you can really focus on the sales rank and the estimated number of sales that they're getting per month. So for example, this one right here, 280 sales, Amazon's not selling it. We can click on it and that may be a good product that we can sell um, on Amazon. Now this is from Samsung. Uh, Samsung's probably gonna be hard to open an account with. So I'm guessing they're probably buying these from a distributor. So you could contact Samsung Samsung and find out if they have distributors or what distributors you should you could buy from. 
Um, but really when you're starting out, you're going to want to try to go directly to the brand, directly to the supplier to get the best price and cut out that middle distributor. But some brands, you're going to have to go through a distributor, um, but try to get right down to uh, the brands to get the best price. Um, so I think that is really all of it. I know that's a lot of information. Um, I'm going to have a replay of this webinar so you guys can watch it again and again to try to get all this information. Um, but that is really everything that you need to know to start finding suppliers and start selling on Amazon. Um, I've got all of the resources that I've used here. You don't have to write these down. Um, I'm going to send you these slides. You'll be able to download those. Um, they're in what's called the handouts as well. Um, so you can definitely get all that. But what I want to mention real quick before we get to the uh, questions um, is if you guys think you need extra help to find uh, suppliers, I'm going to offer my services here um, at a one-time uh, low price just for the people uh, that have gone through this webinar. Um, and I'm going to guarantee to help you find profitable suppliers. Um, so if you're just getting started, um, this is really for you to help you find those first profitable suppliers. I'm going to work with you one-on-one uh, -on -one to help you purchase and set up all of the needed tools uh, that you need. Um, you will have to pay for the tools, um, but I'm going to help you set them up and purchase them, teach you how to use all the tools properly, and guarantee to find you three profitable suppliers. Teach you how to negotiate those prices with those suppliers and how to purchase those first products from those suppliers and then get those products into Amazon and selling for you. Um, now, I'm going to be walking you through how to do this. Keep that in mind. We're going to be doing this together. I'm not just going to do it for you. I'm going to be teaching you so that by the time we're done, you can keep going um, and keep building your Amazon business. Um, you're going to get access to the, an exclusive private Facebook group uh, just for the people who purchase the one-on-one -on -one, um, so we can all work together and ask any questions and kind of grow our businesses together in that exclusive Facebook group. Um, and I'm limiting this to only five spots uh, starting in March. So starting March 4th is when the one-on-one -on -one, uh, training would start. Um, I'm, valuing, I'm valuating this at over $2,000 just based on what I would charge hourly uh, to help you do this. Um, if we did this one-on-one -on -one hourly, just paying the hourly, it would be probably well over $2,000 uh, to do all this for you. And so for a limited time, uh, just for you guys on this webinar or those of you going through the replay, um, I'm going to be selling it for $9.97. Um, this is the first time I'm doing it at this price. Um, the first time I'm actually doing it as a package like this. I've done the one-on-one -on -one hourly coaching. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Um, it probably will never be at this price again. Um, we'll see how it goes at this price, though. So definitely for a limited time at this price. Um, but the big thing... Uh, to go back to the beginning is to find your why. Um, and as I mentioned in the beginning, I watched my dad work hard his entire life. Um, now he's in retirement. He's having to keep working hard. And I'm building this Amazon business to really help them, um, help my parents, help my wife's parents um, so they can have the retirement that they want. And we can also have the life that we want, um, travel when we want to, um, have uh, the time to spend with our kids and things like that to really be able to live life. Uh, get out of that employee mentality, become a business owner and build this Amazon adventure 
And that's what I really want to help you do as well. Um, and so hopefully this webinar has really helped you with that. Um, and for those of you who need more than that, I want to help you one-on-one -on -one, uh, to be able to do this as well. I want you to be able to do the same as I'm doing. Um, this is this picture is my parents in the middle and my wife's parents on the outside there. Uh, my wife is taking the picture. Uh, so I want you to be able to have the life that you have and maybe give your parents the retirement um, that they deserve as well. Um, so again, finding three profitable suppliers guaranteed, limited to five spots in March. Um, there's going to be another five spots in April. Um, and once we're done and I close this webinar, I'm going to email that link out to everyone. Um, so everyone will have uh, equal opportunity to get in on those spots. Um, but I expect those to go pretty quick. So if you're interested in that, maybe sure you jump on that right away. Um, but as soon as we're done here, I will email that link out to everybody. Um, so questions. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and enter them into the uh, questions box here. It looks like we already have quite a few of them. So let me start going through those and I'll answer um, as many as I can here. I'll just stay on here however long it takes to just keep answering questions. Um, we're a few minutes past where I wanted to end the webinar, so I apologize we ran a little bit late, uh, but let's go ahead and do some questions. Take a little drink here. <clears throat> so the first question that we have here was from Dan. Uh, being a Lions fan, you were used to disappointment. Uh, yes, absolutely. I don't know how many times I was on my knees praying for the Lions to make a field goal. And of course, they never failed to miss that field goal. And yes, lots of disappointment as a Lions fan. <clears throat> Still hoping, um, not on my knees anymore. I don't let it run my life uh, like I used to. Uh, moved on to bigger and better things, but still a Lions fan. Still hope they will win it uh, one day, but uh, we shall see. Um, looks like it's going to be a long time coming. Thanks for the question, though, Dan. <laughs> um, so from Julissa, hopefully I'm saying your name right. <clears throat> Are suppliers the same as the brands itself? or are the suppliers the wholesalers? So um, suppliers and brands are typically going to be the same thing. Um, the word is usually interchangeable, not always, um, but typically they're the same thing. Um, the wholesalers, I consider more the wholesalers like you and I. Um, so you and I are the people purchasing the product at wholesale and reselling. Um, you could consider like distributors, wholesalers, um, but brands and suppliers are usually the people you're going to be buying from. Uh, the wholesalers might be the distributors, but I usually consider them um, the you and I, the people who are buying and we're reselling it at retail. So we're wholesalers, or retailers, um, either one of those. Um, from Donald, are there any good books that you suggest? I like to take a break and read for a few minutes when I'm sourcing. Uh, lots of really good books. Um, I'm trying to think of some off the top of my head. Let's see, I got some behind me here. Um, if you haven't read The 4-Hour Workweek, I love that book. Uh, not necessarily that you're ever going to have just a 4-Hour Workweek. Um, but the cool thing with that book is it really gives you the ideas of things that you can do to build a business. And as I said at the beginning, uh, to become wealthy, you need to learn to stop trading your time for money and learn to trade money for time. Uh, in the beginning, you're going to have to trade lots of time for money. But as you grow your business, you need to start building those systems and processes and hiring employees and start trading your money that you've made to get back more of your time. And the 4-Hour Workweek, um, and that's by uh, Tim Ferriss, is a really awesome book. 
Uh, but for more suggestions, Donald, if you go to my website, entrepreneuradventure.com, and click on the resources, I've got some books there as well uh, that I recommend uh, you check out. But there's tons of good books uh, to read out there for sure. Um, from Renee, is there another extension that you are using besides Jungle Scout? Um, so there's lots of uh, extensions. If I exit out of here, um, so these are some of the other extensions uh, that I am using. So I'm using Jungle Scout Chrome plugin, uh, which you've seen, the Keepa Chrome plugin, which is that graph that I was showing you. Um, some other ones that I forgot to mention, a DS Amazon Quick View. And what that is, if you noticed on my Amazon page here, when I get down to the products, the DS Amazon Quick View puts in this information down here. So it gives me the rank, the category, the ASIN, the number of FBA sellers. Also shows you here if Amazon was selling it. Um, if you pay for the DS Amazon Quick View Extended, it also shows you the price history right here. So it'll show you that keep a graph right here on the results page and then also a, a seller's ranking chart as well. Um, so that's a really cool plugin. I definitely recommend grabbing that. The DS Amazon Quick View is free. The extended is a paid, I believe it's like 20 bucks. Um, other than that, um, if you had any other extensions that you were wondering about, you can post that in the questions, Renee. Um, but those are some of the main extensions that I'm using. Oh, one other one that I really like to use, actually. Um, let's say uh, this was an item that had multiple variety products. It had like maybe uh, one pack, two pack, three pack, or different sizes here. Uh, what I like to do is to determine which size is selling the best. Now, let's just see here if I can find one that has multiple sizes really quick. I'm just going to open some of these up. Um, I use a website called Review Meta. And what that's going to allow me to do is it breaks down the products or the reviews by whichever um, size or quantity or whatever the case may be that it breaks it down. Let's hope I can find one here quick. Probably not since we're going live. It'll, these will all be just single selling items. Uh, let's just find one that's really big. Let's see here. Uh, let's see. Dog to food. Let's go to dog food. Let's see if I can do this really quick for you. So let's just see if some of these have some different packs, different sizes maybe or something. Okay, here we go. So now this one has, you can see, four different colors and a bunch of different sizes. So maybe one of these, the profit is really good for you. The other ones are not so good, but how do you know which one is selling well? How do you know you should buy the one that you're looking at? And the way I do that is this has 2,000 some reviews. So I use this plugin called Review Meta, reviewmeta.com. And when I click on that, it takes me to a page uh, where they analyze the reviews. And what I usually do is I click on Update Available here and just refresh, and it pulls in all the reviews and gathers all that data. And it's going to break them down by variation for me. And that way you can see which variation is selling the best and which ones are not. Um, so now I like to reload the page because it doesn't always update. You can see it went from eight to nine product variations. But then if we click on that, now you can see that how many reviews are coming from each variation. Um, so this first one, if we click on it, that one is getting the bulk majority of the reviews. And that is the color natural real chicken, 28 pounds. So that's the biggest seller. Um, so what I would do just to kind of estimate how many sales that might, might be getting, 
because if you click Jungle Scout, Jungle Scout is going to give you the total number of sales that that product is getting kind of as a whole. Um, Amazon is combining all of the variations into one. Come on, Jungle Scout. Oh, shoot, we're on the Smiles page. They, they link to the Amazon Smile, and the Jungle Scout I don't think works on that page. So I'm going to jump over here. Let's go to, oh, we're already on that one here. So select it here. And so you can see that very that one, the whole listing is getting 8,000 some sales. So what I would do to just get an idea is I would open up a calculator and I would take that 879 reviews and divide that by the total reviews, which is, where'd it go? I got too many tabs open here, 2,221. And so I can guess that that variation is selling about 39% of the time. So now I know that that's selling 39% of the time. So I can open Jungle Scout back up. And if I times that number by the total number of sales, which is 8,673, we can guesstimate that that variation is selling 3,432 items uh, per month for that variation. Um, it's a guesstimate. It's a ballpark. Don't take it as uh, you know gospel or anything like that. A Jungle Scout is guessing the number of sales based on its sales rank. And I am guessing how many that variation is selling uh, based off of that calculation. Um, but it gives you an idea of how many you can probably sell of that product per month. Now, with that said, that 3,000 something is how many is selling per month. But you got to remember, you're going to be sharing the buy box with anyone else, all these other sellers of that product that are in the buy box range. Um, so what I would do, and we're going to disregard for now that Amazon is selling that one, and they're the only prime seller. But let's say there was 10 other people selling this product, and you'd be the 11th seller all within a similar price range. I would then divide that by 11, and now I know that I will probably sell around 300 of those per month. So hopefully that all makes sense, but that's kind of how I break that down. Um, and I hopefully that uh, answers uh, some of your other guys' questions out there. Um, but Renee, if you had any other questions on different types of extensions that you had in mind, uh, post that as well. Um, so Ed here, what kind of website is ideal? a company profile landing page or an actual e-commerce like Shopify store. So most brand websites are not going to have a store. Some of them are um, ideally probably not having a store, um, but it wouldn't deter me if they did have a store. Um, either way, I would contact them. Um, doesn't really matter. But uh, like that basic website that we seen, it was just a, a bad website that somebody threw up probably back in the early 2000s or something. Um, that was a really good website that I would contact and find that brand and get a hold of them um, because it's a smaller company. You can work with them, develop a relationship, and hopefully sell their products. But it um, doesn't really matter too much if, it's, if they do or don't have their own e-commerce store. <clears throat> Um, let's see, Renee again, how accurate is Jungle Scout sales estimates? Is there a way to verify? Um, so, you know, it's it's a guesstimate. And the way I do verify is in Amazon or AMZ Analyzer, it's also given me an estimated number of sales. So like this one, AMZ Analyzer is estimating 267. If we jump over to that listing and we run Jungle Scout, it's probably going to be different. Um, but between the two, you can have an idea. Uh, when you're making your first purchase, you're not going to purchase the number of items that you think you're going to sell. So you can see um, Jungle Scout thinks it's two, 427. 
AMZ analyzer thinks it's uh, 269. So it's a big variation there. But when you make that first order, you're not going to be ordering 300 or 100 even. You're probably going to order 10, 20, 30, 40 of them to keep your risk low. And then once you get it in there, you can see how fast they sell. And from there, determine how many you want to purchase uh, to keep yourself in stock um, and keep reordering and just using that averages on your own sales. So this is just a guesstimate to give you an idea on <clears throat> what you could potentially sell. Um, none of them are completely accurate. Um, you know, one might be more accurate than the other. It's really hard to say. Um, but I always consider that they're estimating up. So I always round down. If Jungle Scout says 420, I'm probably going to go down to 350 or 300. And then I see AMZ Analyzer has 269, so I might go down to like 200. Um, so always round down. Be conservative, especially when you're starting out. Even when you're big, you don't want to buy a bunch and then get it in and find out that something was wrong and you can't sell them. Uh, so start out with small orders. All right, so Eric, uh, Todd, you must have muted by accident. I hope not. Hopefully everybody can still hear me. I'm getting some new questions, so I'm thinking everybody can hear me. So hopefully I'm not muted. Um, says I'm on air, says I'm recording, and my microphone's going. Uh, so next person here, Tia, Taya, hopefully I'm not butchering that. Do you already have to have your business set up with a tax ID and or reseller ID before you contact the suppliers to set up a wholesale account? Um, yes, absolutely. You're going to want to have your business set up, have your tax ID for at least your state that your business is set up in, have your EIN number, which is your employer identification number, which is what you get from uh, the federal government. Um, if you search on Google how to get an EIN, it'll take you right to the page. It's really easy. I'm pretty sure it's free. And then uh, uh, how to set up or how to get a sales tax ID in Wisconsin or Florida or whatever state you're in, you should be able to find that as well. Um, I would also recommend if you haven't set up an LLC, um, you don't have to. You can go as a sole proprietorship, especially just starting out. That's completely fine, especially if you're not sure how to do that process. But at some point, you'll want to set up an LLC, which is a limited liability company, to give some legal padding between your business and you personally. Um, but just starting out, all you'd need is that EIN, employee identification number, and a sales tax ID set up with your state because um, most suppliers and brands are going to request that information um, when they give you the paperwork to set up an account. Um, okay, Eric says you can hear me now, so that, that's good. Just a brief period, something went wrong there. Um, all right, uh, Julissa, can you use AMZ Analyzer for an Excel spreadsheet I created myself? Yes, absolutely. All it needs is either an ASIN, which is the Amazon identification number, or a UPC, or an ISBN from books, um, or an EAN, which I think it's EAN in Europe. Uh, one of those numbers in one of the columns, and it will match that up to the product on Amazon and give you all the information. Of course, you're going to want a, probably a, a column for how much it costs you to buy it. Um, that way it'll calculate all of the ROI and the profit margin and stuff correctly, but it's not absolutely necessary. On the keeper graph, whoops, scrolled and I lost it here. Where was I? On the Keeper Graph from Felicia, on the Keeper Graph, I have run into some products that say that the graph is for parent ASIN and not for the variation I'm looking at. Can I trust that graph for that listing? Um, you know, I'm not sure actually off the top of my head. I have not either noticed that or paid attention to that myself. Um, I would 
If it says that, then you may not be able to. So what you might want to do is there's an alternative it, called camelcamelcamel.com that you can paste an Amazon URL or ASIN into it. And I think that gives you historical Amazon data as well. So if you check Amazon here, um, yeah, so there you go. You can see Amazon has not sold this uh, since May sometime or before May. Um, but so there you can kind of double check uh, to see if Amazon has sold that before as well. It, it may have the same problem if it's just looking at um, the parent instead of the variation. But unfortunately, I have not paid attention or noticed that. Uh, but I would maybe double check on the key, the camel, camel, camel .com if you do run into that. Um, Jeremy, do you have a separate business name that you have to register to start calling suppliers? I would definitely give yourself a business name. Uh, whether you register it off the bat with an LLC or not, I would definitely come up with a name for your business and call your business that. Um, put it in your email signature and all of that and start going by that name so when you call up, you can say, hi, I'm Jeremy from XYZ Corporation or XYZ Products or whatever you want to name uh, your company. And so it makes you sound uh, more legit, more like a real company. Um, so I definitely have a, a separate name. Um, and whether you register it up front or not, I definitely have a separate name for your business. Um, and Engen, Engen, hopefully I'm not butchering that. Finding three profitable suppliers covers opening three wholesale accounts as well. Um, yes, absolutely. So he's talking about the one-on-one -on -one coaching that I'm going to do. Um, that's helping you find three profitable suppliers with profitable products. Um, so that's three profitable su suppliers, and that would mean at least three profitable products. Hopefully, we can find more than one profitable product per supplier and account that we get open for you. Um, so at least three suppliers, at least three products, that would be. Um, Jordan, with this one-on-one, -on -one, will this one-on-one -on -one come with video course or is it just one-on-one? -on -one? Um, it's one-on-one -on -one video conferencing. So we would start the video conference you would share your desktop on your website using the software that I have. And I would just work with you, um, walking you through finding the suppliers, opening the accounts, um, doing all of that. And then we would get the list of all the suppliers that you can contact. I would show you how to contact a few of them. And then you would go contact all the rest of them the way that I showed you. And then once you start getting some responses from those suppliers, we can jump back on the call and walk through replying back and forth and opening up those accounts and things like that. So I'm going to show you all the steps to get contacting the suppliers. And then once we open the accounts, I'm going to show you how to run those products uh, through AMZ Analyzer, find the profitable products and find those products, get that first order with that supplier um, and get them into Amazon selling for you. So I'm, we're going to work back and forth either by video screen sharing if necessary, um, phone calling, emails in the Facebook group, uh, whatever, you know, whatever method we need to use uh, to get you to find those suppliers for you. Um, Ed says, Cardone 10X fan here. Real happy to see an Amazon or AMZ seller like yourself living the 10x rule. Um, awesome. Happy to hear that. 10x is awesome. If you guys haven't checked out Grant Cardone, his book 10x, uh, one of the books I would recommend for the previous person who asked about that. Um, uh, went to his conference. It was really awesome. Um, a lot of motivation and things like that. Um, of course, he tries to sell you stuff at the conferences, so expect that going in. Um, but a lot of motivation, a lot of information that you can take away. Um, really cool um, 
really cool a group of, of people and, and movement that, with 10X. Um, Tyler, do you physically receive products and package them or do you ship them directly to Amazon Warehouse? So um, both. Um, some suppliers, I ask them if they can ship directly in for me, if it makes sense. They send it in for me directly. I just send them shipping labels. Um, other ones I have sent to prep centers that I work with, and they prep them, get them ready for Amazon, and then send them in. Uh, right now, I'm in between a prep center, so I'm having everything sent to my house currently, and I'm doing that um, working with my wife and her parents, and they're helping me with that, getting them and sending them into Amazon. Um, the prep center that I was using screwed up some of my stuff or a lot of my stuff and made me not so happy. So I'm not using them anymore, and I'm in the hunt to find a new one um, that will do a better job. Um, but all of the above, if you can get them to send it directly into Amazon, you're cutting out that extra step, cutting out the extra shipping, the extra labor. Um, so definitely do that if you can. Some people don't like doing that though at all. Some people like to get the product, make sure everything is good to go. They'd rather take that extra step and a little bit of extra cost, make sure everything's perfect. So um, in the beginning, maybe send it all to yourself, verify it, make sure things are good to go and everything's perfect the way you want it and send it into Amazon. Um, but I do a lot of all of the above. Um, do you use VAs? Yes, I have a couple of virtual assistants. That's what VAs work stand for. Um, I would recommend doing all the work yourself up front. Um, and then as you start uh, building SLAs, they're called, which are uh, standard, uh, I think SLA, standard level agreements or standard, you know, SLPs, standard level, something like that. Basically, step-by-step -step directions on how to do the different processes of your business, then you can hand it off to assistants. Um, so I have two virtual assistants in the Philippines, uh, Sandra and Melody. Sandra does a lot of the administrative tasks on Amazon for me, and Melody is my buyer's agent. So she is doing all of the emailing, contacting, and opening up accounts with suppliers, and then emailing me the list or emailing the people that I need to call uh, because they either didn't reply. Um, and that's one thing I didn't mention. If you don't get a reply from emails, pick up the phone and call. Um, and some suppliers are gonna want to talk to you on the phone regardless. Um, so email communication is how we open up and then follow up with phone calls um, if necessary or if you don't get a response um, because maybe it went to spam or Guess what? There's lots of other people sending emails as well, trying to open accounts. So it might have got lost, or maybe they didn't like your email, whatever. Follow up with a phone call um, and get those accounts open. But <clears throat> yes, Taylor, I definitely do use virtual assistants. Um, does your coaching include teaching systems or processes you're currently using, finding suppliers, the campaigns you use, your buying strategies? Um, so basically the coaching system is going to be me showing you all of those processes that I'm currently using. I don't like have them in a PDF uh, format that I'm going to hand over to you. Not yet. Um, but that is definitely a really good idea for me to build that out, Ed, for the future. Um, but right now it's going to be me walking you through those processes that I currently use and that are working for me and getting them working for you uh, uh, on your end as well. Um, and then uh, Felicia again, and is the Jungle Scout sales numbers linked to the same parent ASIN on Keep a Graph? Um, so most of the times the Jungle Scout is gonna be for the parent ASIN. Um, most of the products, Amazon has now rolled everything together. They used to break them out. Every once in a while, you'll find one that's broken out. Um, but for the most part, they're going to be all separate. Um, you can see if they're broken out. Let me see if I still have this one open. So um, this plugin that I'm using up here is a paid plugin. It's called RevSeller. Um, so it gives me the rank right here at the top. Um, but otherwise, you can kind of look down here and just see where the rank currently is. 
um, at the end here, if you zoom in to just the day, you can see it's currently at 1,845. Now, if I click to a different one, if that rank changes, one thousand. now this one went to 16,929. So that means this particular listing is still separated. Um, and if I go down here, go back to the day, um, it's a different sales rank. So this one's at 20,000, Keepa is saying. Um, so in that case, Jungle Scout is probably, it's going to give us the 16,000 rank. So it is breaking that one out. Um, and you can see it's actually breaking out a few of the other um, variations here. So if you see all these variations underneath here and they're all different ranks, then it is breaking them out. If they're all the same rank, then they're all rolled together. And then you're going to have to use that review meta trick that I showed you uh, to kind of figure out how many sales each variation is getting. Um, Dan, let's see. It looks like you are also using Rev Seller. Yes, so you uh, <laughs> brought up the question right as I mentioned it. So perfect timing on that question. Um, Rev Seller, as I mentioned, is the uh, Chrome extension that I'm using at the top here. It is paid. Um, I forget how much it is, but it's like 100 plus or something like that. Um, it's a really cool plugin that what you can do is you can enter in how much you would pay for this. So let's say your cost is 70 bucks um, and it gives you the net profit after all the Amazon fees and stuff like that, the ROI and the margin as well. So it's a really cool little plugin uh, to be able to just real quick figure out how much you would make on a product. Um, so that's definitely one plugin that I use as well. So thank you for pointing that out, Dan. Um, Renee, does Jungle Scout extension also work on other websites besides Amazon? No, it does not. It only works on Amazon that I know of right now. Um, Jonathan, Jonathan says, thanks for everything. He's got to go. Appreciate you being on, Jonathan. Um, Renee, what kind of insurance is needed for wholesale business? Um, so the big thing with the wholesale business at some point, sooner rather than later, you're probably going to want to get product uh, or liability insurance. Um, you're going to want to talk with a licensed insurance provider in your area to find out exactly what you need, but some kind of liability insurance. It's going to vary probably from state to state. Um, you know, in the beginning, um, my main recommendation is going to be to get liability insurance immediately. That's my on the record recommendation. But officially, when I was just starting out, I didn't have any kind of liability insurance. It's a, uh, an expense um, that up front might not make sense. Uh, but definitely as you grow, you're going to want to get liability uh, insurance so that um, let's say somebody buys this dog food and their dog gets sick and dies. Uh, what a lawyer is going to do is they're going to sue the brand. They're going to sue the distributors and they're going to sue the sellers of this product. They're going to cast a wide net and you're going to get snagged in it. Um, now the judge, once it goes to court is most likely going to say, well, you know, the people selling it and the distributors didn't have anything to do with it. It's all on the uh, brand. Uh, but to get that to that point is going to take time. It's probably going to take legal fees, probably an attorney and things like that. And it can cost thousands of dollars uh, just to get to the point where the judge says, oh, you're not actually legally liable, but you're going to get sued as a part of that. Um, so having that liability insurance is going to basically pay for an attorney to take care of all that for you. So you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to spend time away from your business. So definitely would recommend <clears throat> liability insurance. So talk with your local insurance provider about that. Um, do you have business insurance? At this point, I do. Uh, when I started out, I didn't. Um, Jordan, thank you. SOP, Standard Operating Procedures. That was the term that I couldn't remember. Um, and Standard Operating Procedures are basically 
breaking down everything you do in your business step by step. And at that point, you can hand it off to a virtual assistant who can then do that process. And imagine this, probably make it better than the way that you did it. Um, in fact, uh, Melody took my standard operating procedure and does it better than what I was doing it. So um, standard operating procedure is definitely something good to have and look into as you grow your business. Um, Jordan, again, what do you say is your account closing percent between email versus calling? Uh, that is a number that I should have. Unfortunately, I don't have that off the top of my head, but I'm going to guess maybe 5 to 10%, somewhere in that range. So you're going to get a lot of no's. Expect a lot of no's. Be ready for it. Uh, do not let it get you down. Keep moving forward, contacting more suppliers. Um, if you're going to be serious about this, if you can co contact 100 or more suppliers per week, it's going to be ideal to really start opening those accounts because even the accounts that you're going to open, you're going to find a lot of them are not going to have profitable products. And maybe you can't reach the buy levels that you need to get to to get down to the price um, to make them profitable. So it's going to take a lot of suppliers you're going to have to contact to find the products uh, that you're going to need to be able to start making some money. Um, Jordan, again, how would you fit in calling suppliers when working nine to five with commute Monday to Friday? Um, I would say um, your lunch, on your lunch times and on your breaks or on your commute, uh, call during your commute. If you have a long commute, um, you just have to find that time um, if you want to get it going. And, you know, a lot of suppliers, you're not going to need to call them. Um, but at the same time, a lot of them are going to want to talk to you. So you're just going to have to find that time. Most of the time I find it, suppliers just give me their phone number and say, give me a call. Um, so then you can call them on your time. Um, but you're just going to have to find that time that you'll be able to do it. Um, Ed, thank you for all the information you've shared, Todd. I wish you all the best. Thank you, Ed. I really appreciate you uh, joining the webinar, and hopefully the information has helped. Um, Donald, price of Jungle Scout Pro. Uh, let's see. And that's actually one thing. Um, it is lifetime access to Jungle Scout is ending on March 31st, and I actually have that link here. Um, and by the way, if you purchase any of these, I would appreciate you using the links either in the PDFs or from my website because they are affiliate links. And I'll get a, a little cut of that sale at no additional cost to you, and it'll help pay for uh, me giving all this free information, uh, help me pay me back a little bit. So if you do buy them, buy them through that. Um, but here you go. So $97 for the light um, or $197 for the Pro, which is what I am using. Um, let's see what you get with the Pro. Um, you get the web app. So there's a web front end that kind of tracks that stuff for you. And you can track products, um, product profit calculator, FBA fee estimator, product opportunity score. None of that is absolutely necessary. Um, so if you're on a budget, this $97 Chrome extension is going to work fine. If you have the money, uh, splurge for the $197 and get the web app um, integration and features as well so you can track the products long term um, as well, which is really nice. But uh, Jungle Scout is going to be switching to a monthly fee, monthly reoccurring fee, and they're going to be going away from this one-time purchase. Um, so if you are serious about this and thinking about purchasing Jungle Scout, uh, definitely do that before March 31st um, and get that discount. And like I said, if you can use my link here, that would be appreciated. <clears throat> uh, Renee, how much does a virtual assistant cost? Uh, right now I'm paying them about $4 an hour. Um, they're based out of the Philippines. Um, that's a, a reasonable wage uh, for an assistant in the Philippines, uh, but it's going to vary 
you know, if you want to get someone in the U.S., could be uh, ten, fifteen dollars an hour. Um, so it depends on uh, where they're going to be from. Um, if you're just starting out, money is uh, an issue. Virtual assistants in the Philippines are great because they speak English as their first language. So usually they speak English very well, don't have too much of an accent, and it works out really well there. Um, Dan, do you use credit cards or pay invoices when working with suppliers? I try to use credit cards as much as possible because I use a, a Capital One Spark business card that has 2% cash back. So if they allow paying with credit cards, that's definitely what I use because it gives me 2% free money, basically. Um, but some of them require you pay from a bank draft or a wire. Uh, other ones will require you to pay by check. Um, and in that case, you're just going to have to do it that route. Uh, but if you can, get a credit card with points and use the credit card. Points or cash back. <clears throat> Scott, if you are already working with suppliers and selling, will the coaching be able to be tailored to more advanced coaching sessions? Um, yeah, definitely. You know, I can help you find more uh, suppliers or maybe if you wanted to work through some issues that you're having or questions and things like that, um, we could definitely figure something out there. Um, it's mostly tailored towards people trying to help them find their first products. Um, but if you want uh, me to answer some questions that on what you're currently doing and maybe help you find some additional suppliers or something along those lines, um, go ahead and purchase uh, the slot and we can figure that out uh, as we go. Uh, Donald, if I purchase before March 31st, will I be grandfathered in? Or does everyone go to a monthly charge? Um, you're grandfathered in if you purchase before the 31st. After that, everyone will be, um, everybody who purchase after the 31st, it'll be a monthly return. Um, but before you're grandfathered in. Uh, Renee, I look at Jungle Scope Chrome pricing, Chrome pricing on their website, but instead of the lifetime, it says annual fee. Um, Correct. So there, maybe it's an annual fee. Then they're they're going to, um, but they will no longer have a lifetime. And so you have to actually, I believe now you'll have to go through my link because um, it's a special link uh, for affiliates to offer um, to people before March 31st to get that lifetime access. So if you go to this website here, type it in, or just go to entrepreneuradventure.com click on resources and then click on Jungle Scout there. Um, that'll take you over there also. Um, so yes, the lifetime is only from my link. Um, all right, so that is the last questions that we have. Um, so again, I really appreciate everybody being on here. Awesome that uh, so many of you have been able to hang out here till the end and uh, go through all the questions. Um, I'm going to jump over and send that email to the link. So if any of you are interested in that one-on-one uh, -on -one guaranteed coaching where I'm going to guarantee to find you three profitable suppliers with at least one profitable product each, um, watch your email. That will be coming over here shortly. Um, but again, appreciate everything and happy selling, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Best of uh uh, best of luck and success and keep me posted uh, regardless on uh, how you do and let me know how you're doing. Talk to you later.